In this video tutorial, I want to show you how to calibrate a projection system using multiple camera positions. We might need to use multiple camera positions for different reasons. For example, when we want to calibrate screens that cover a large field of view or even full 360 degrees, or there is not enough space in front of the screen to see it entirely from one camera position. In these cases, we need to combine multiple camera positions to cover the complete screen. Also, if we want to capture irregular screen shapes that are not perfect, for example fabric screens, we need to capture the screen from different camera angles to reconstruct the actual screen shape. In order to combine multiple camera positions, we need to know these camera positions really exact. For that reason, we need reference markers whose exact 3D position is measured. Since we might use many camera positions, the reference markers should also be automatically found in the camera image by Creators POS Finder. This time you should really use a calibrated camera, so you should have your camera database. If it's not written here, then select the camera database on your computer. We set the basic screen shape, but we don't go into details, we will recover the actual screen shape during the calibration process. Set up your channels as usual. and select your calibrated camera and add it to the project. Okay. I quickly adjust my camera parameters to get a good camera image. For calibrating with multiple camera positions, we need to have reference markers that are exactly known. The generated markers at the screen corners are not so exact. There's a way to produce markers integrated in the creator, the so-called marker mover. If you go to tools, marker mover, we can here generate markers that we can later measure, import their 3D positions, and we can auto-detect these markers with a camera in the POS finder. So you open the marker mover, and create a new marker mover project. You have the number of code markers per projection channel, the default is 3 by 2. If you have many channels that are quite dense, you can reduce these numbers. I will stick with the defaults. And the size of the code markers in pixels, how, how they should appear on the screen. We use code markers so we can later detect them automatically with the POS finder. And we just start with the first available. We now see on the screen all our code markers. We can even move them around if they are beyond the screen or if we want to better fill our screen. And also if points are overlapping somewhere in the middle, we can drag them around to avoid these overlaps. For measuring these markers with a measurement tool, we should also enable the center mark that makes it more easy to measure these markers with an external measurement tool. After we have measured these markers, we can import them into the creator. Here on the top left, we have the reference points list, you can also see in our 3D view. These are currently the auto-generated markers. We remove these markers and now load your measured markers using the reference points editor, hitting the plus tool button and import your marker file. You can select the scale here if you need to convert between units. In Creator, all our units are millimeters, so if you might have measured in meters, you have to scale by 1000. Now we have our markers imported. First thing that we can do is uh, fit our screen shape to the measured markers that are all on our screen. We go to Tools, Screen Fitting, and here we have the list of all our measured markers. 
Uh, before we fit the screen, we should remove markers that are not on the actual screen shape. So I remove the first two points that are defining the coordinate system and keep only the points that are on my actual screen shape. When I hit the fit button, my spherical screen shape is now fitted to my reference markers. There's one more adjustment that we should do to the imported reference markers. The markers that we imported had have now just an ordinary numbering at the code column, but in order to use them in the POS finder for automatically detecting these markers, they need to have exactly the codes that we used with the marker mover. So, the camera image. So our markers have 32, 48, and so on. There's a special coding for these markers and we can convert the numbering of markers here in the reference points list. Let's switch to the 3D view so we can better see what happens. So our marker 1 and 2 is on the floor, it's not actually a code marker. Our code markers start at 3 and until the last one. They should be measured in order so the numbering can be automatically converted. Select these markers, open the context menu, and use the index to code marker ID option. So, we can do some shifting. Um, if my indices would start at zero, we do no shifting, and the zero would be converted to marker code 32. My markers start at three, so I shift them by minus three and then I hit convert. And now these markers have the correct naming as we need for automatic code marker detection. If you have not such straight numbering coding, you can select the individual markers and change the code here in the editor. Okay, now we have prepared our code marker measurements. Let's continue with the usual project setup like we would do for a single camera position. Select the, mark, uh, the projectors that we can see for the first camera position. In my case I can see all projectors, even if not full, but at least partly, at a camera position. And now we can start and edit the global dot pattern. Switch to the camera view, you can see a bit. So I'll go through the channel and edit the dot pattern. Now we have our global dot pattern that includes only dots that are fully visu visible on the screen. But if I look through my camera image, I see okay, there are projectors that I can only see partly. So also their points are just partly visible. Some are cutted and several other points are not even the camera image. I can override these dot patterns for each camera position and use a global dot pattern as a starting point. I do this override by going to the position table and select the projector where I need to change the dot pattern. Let's check the first projector by selecting it and showing the dot pattern. This one is fully visible, so I, it needs no adjustments. The second projector is only partly visible, needs adjustments. So with this projector selected, go to the projector tab and hit edit dot pattern. It starts with a global dot pattern, and I can now remove additional points by dragging a rectangle with the left mouse button. Continue with the next projector. This one is fully visible. And the last one we need to adjust. Okay. Now we have done our preparations for this camera position. And we can now start by finding the camera position. For that purpose, we project the code markers again and we open the position finder. Now since we have these special code markers 
this pattern that can be automatically detected. You just need to hit the find code marker button. So the post finder automatically detects all these markers in the camera image. And we hit the find position button. And our camera position is found. After we have captured the camera position, we now can capture the dot patterns for all the project doors on this position by hitting take images and analyze. We can now reposition our camera to capture the next area of the screen. I check with the full white projector image uh, which part of the screen I am capturing. I select the projectors I can see and add another camera position. Now we adjust our dot pattern again. Check all dot patterns. Looking fine. So now we project our code markers again. Open the post finder. Find the code markers. Find position. Hit OK. And capture the dot pattern. Now I've captured the complete screen surface. It is okay to just rotate the camera, but then we need to tell the creator that it should not reconstruct the actual screen geometry. We do so by going to project settings and adjusting the setting position combination. By default it's set to triangulate, where it tries to actually reconstruct the shape of the screen. But this doesn't work if the camera is placed at the same position and just rotated. So I switch to blend. And now, for each camera position, the screen shape that we have fitted before with our measured markers will be traced from each camera position. And then the results from each camera position are combined. After we have captured all the data, and we have our screen shape set up, we can hit the Generate 2D button to generate our final projection mesh. And now we could continue with Mapper 2D or 3D to prepare the exports. Let me show you now how to actually reconstruct the real surface of your screen. For that, we need to position our camera at different positions, not at the same place. So I will add another camera position. I place my camera here on the bottom right. And then later on I will put the next camera position on the left side so I can do a real 3D reconstruction of the screen shape. Okay, let's start. So I have found my camera position and now I can add a new position in Creator. In my case, here I can actually see the complete screen if you really can't cover the whole screen with individual camera positions, you just continue by always putting the camera in different places until you have captured the complete screen shape at least twice. So each dot that is projected on the screen needs to be captured from at least two camera positions. To find the camera position, I project the code markers, go to post finder, Search for code markers, find the camera position, hit OK. Check the dot pattern, I can see all the dots, so just capture. And we will add our last position. Check my dot pattern again, add a new camera position, show the code markers, find 
I decode markers, find position, and capture the dot patterns. Now with our data captured, let's head over to the 3D view. And before we can reconstruct the 3D shape of the screen, we need to go to File, Project Settings, and ensure that the position combination mode is set to triangulate. And then if we hit Generate 3D, our actual 3D shape of the screen is reconstructed. So this is not a perfect spherical screen. It is a little bit bumped and these details we have now captured using multiple camera positions and capturing the dot pattern multiple times from these camera positions. And we could now continue as usual with Mapper 2D or Mapper 3D for preparing the exports. Thanks for watching. Bye.